Great escape at Six Flags Theme Park. All right, from the bridge, from the parking lot, you see one of their coasters. Here we go, Six Flags Great Escape. All right, so we got the main entrance. Go fast, experience center. You get your strollers, your wheelchairs, and your electric carts. On the other side of the main entrance, you got the hospitality center. Now, once you pass the entrance, you see their drop tower. To get to that, you can head to the right, directly past the main entrance. Come to Sasquatch. Get Sasquatch right next to a sign. A big old giant truck. Double drop tower. Okay. Four, three, two, ah, they lie to ya. Bounces up a bit too. So it's not just a drop tower, it's kind of a uh, hybrid. Across from Sasquatch, you got swan boats. So swan boats are not operational just yet. But this is where they would be. All right, so right down the pass from Sasquatch, you got Thunder Alley. Get to drive these old timey cars. Get the track that runs around. You got horns that work also. That's pretty cool. Essentially slower moving uh, go-kart type. You're on a single rail. So you don't really control the, the steering, but you do actually hit the gas pedal to make it go. So this is always a fun ride for the kids. Directly across from Thunder Alley, you got Grease Lightning. It's often called the Ring of Fire. Basically, it's go back and forth to get enough momentum to go all the way around. All right, so from the cars, we go across the railroad tracks. Then we come to a flashback. This is basically a cookie cutter, boomerang roller coaster. These types of roller coasters are at many, many different amusement parks all over the country. So you move on one side, you go around the loop, you go around this, and you go back up and you do it backwards. Right in front of Flashback, you got the Storytown train station. All right, I'm on the train at Six Flags Great Escape. Waiting for it to get going. Starting to move, here we go. Nice to be at a Six Flags Park with an operating train. by flashback.
It's a nice cool day today. Lower 70s. Got an overcast. Chance of rain showers a little bit later. Park also has a sky ride. Passing by Storybook Land. There's Timber Town. size coaster story town USA oh, look at all the baby uh, Canada geese right there with the mommies and daddies. That's always cute. I thought they are super fuzzy when they're little. Nice thing about this park is there are lots and lots of trees around. Actually out in nature. in some parks where it's just all basically concrete. Speaking of nature, look, there's an elephant. Ghost Town. Oh man. Old stagecoach. Ooh. Got lost the top of the shelf. Really old wagon. Wow. Got jungle land. Another elephant. All 
Wow, they really need to do some uh, some improvements on this. Pretty pretty sad. Got this old bridge. I have no idea what this area back here used to be. It's possibly it was a, a walkthrough experience also. Up, 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 up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all those! Oh my gosh, they are so cute! Oh my gosh, they are so cute! Canada geese are basically all over the United States. I mean, they're everywhere. Nice short train ride. They're approximately 10 minutes long. All right, head back into the train station. That was fun ride. Yeah, right across the train station, you got Capone's Pizzeria. That's what they got. Beverages. All right, so from here, gonna cross the bridge. There's this big gingerbread looking house right here. You got cotton candy. That's what they've got. All right, so show you the map. See right where I'm at. Main entrance is the lower left where I came in. So I took the lower path around right here by Capone's and Flashback. So I'm gonna head up. Gonna head up this way right here. I'll show you the stuff here before I wrap around. And then we're going to cross the bridge that's right here and check all the stuff up, you know, out in the other area. So we're going to be passing underneath the, uh, the sky ride here at the big amphitheater. We've got shows throughout the year, different seasons. So in addition to maps, there's arrows pointing in different areas and attractions, make it easier to find your way around. Got the Grand Carousel. A fun carousel. Not just horses, you got some other animals on here. Some of the horses on the ends and the benches do not move. Right in front of this, you got the Jolly Tree Theater. Again, different productions throughout the year. This area also has some old homes and castles. Fitting in with the uh, storybook land area. This pathway here leads towards the front. So we're gonna go from the carousel, we're gonna head this way. 
Got this chainsaw moose right here. It's chainsaw art. Got another food stand here. Got funnel cakes and soft serve. Now all the food stands and restaurants are gonna have drink bottles for sale, as well as fountain drink refills. Just to the left of that, you got restroom locations. Got some uh, cans and intermittents, I'm guessing that's what this is. Got this really nice looking castle. The fountain's going. Other characters. Got Storyland hoops. Can I play a game? No, I'm good, thank you. you sure? Yes, sir. Of course, you got Mario and the princess here. <laughs> Another little mini house. Little kids can play in all these. Got story lane blocks. You knock all three blocks down, you get one of these giant peppers. And if you just happen to be a doctor and you want one of these, people can start calling you Dr. Pepper. Just showing your map again, so you see where I'm at. I'm heading towards the left side. This whole area over here has these mini houses. Like I said, all the little ones would love playing in these. All the houses, and you got a church and a school, blacksmith shop, you got a hat shop. General store. Oh yeah, there we go. I always enjoy waterfalls. Got general store. Got Boot Hill Cafe. Got meals. It's also a Starbucks location. So you need to get your caffeine fix, it's the place to come. Got Boot Hill. That cemetery. Got ghost town. Gonna go through this cave. So you go through the cave, and this pretty much acts as a a cut through to bring you up to the next area. Area up here is themed as a Wild West town. Got this very unique ride called Condor. Condor. So it spins, rotates, and raises you up. They get all sorts of action on this. Right next to Condor, you got Charlie's Saloon. Their menu board. Had my lunch in here. I got the mac and cheese with barbecue brisket. It was very, very good. I smelled this food cooking when I first got here. Right around the back. Got another show stage. Sit on hay bales, picnic tables, and benches, and other chairs. Got the ADK Outlaw. This is actually my first ride of the day. Fantastic ride. As it spins, the ride vehicle rotates several times depending on how much uh, the weight is on it. So you're all the way up there, and it's the highest ride in the park. And it is fantastic. So yes, very, 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 very fun ride. See them rotating around. You can see the whole park and all surrounding areas from this. Right next to that, you got Steaming Demon. This is my second ride of the day and my first roller coaster. It's 
Six Flags Grand Escape has six roller coasters. So in addition to the loop, they got a several barrel rolls over here. That is rough right there. See part of the water flume from here also. So from those rides going through, going through the Red Garter Corral, got Desperado Plunge. So you do have a good chance of getting wet in this spot right here. Right in front of Desperado Plunge. You got all these faux front buildings. We got the Marshall Stampede bumper cars. Good old classic bumper cars. So I guess one of their Halloween events right over there, one of their attractions. So the best ride is gonna be this one right here. All right, next up we got Canyon Blaster. It says Red Track, what Tan supports. Yeah, so Canyon Blaster is a pretty slow roller coaster. But I do really like the theming here. Not even on an old train. Right below the tracks. Cool thing about this coaster is kids only need to be four foot tall, 48 inches. And it's not overly aggressive. So it's not going to be too scary for the little kids. This was my second coaster I rode today and my third ride overall. portion of the ride is give me this area over here starts out very slow but you do get a little bit of speed and turns. So I said nothing super fast. It is a bit bumpy in this portion. Then back into the station. Alright, so get to the next area. I gotta backtrack just a little bit. Going back down to this area. Alright, so again I'm backtracking through all of this. Alright, as you can see on the map, I backtracked all the way from this part over here. Backtracked all the way over here. So I'm going to head over to this area next. Alright, next area is Timbertown. Got the ranger station. So Timbertown is Great Escape's kid area. First up, we got Spruce's Wilderness Bus Tours. Alright, so this type of ride is at lots and lots of different amusement parks. Often just different ride vehicles, but they all do the same thing, just like this. Across now you got Oakley's Honey Swings. So there's a little kitty bounce tower. So these are all the characters from Timbertown. 
Hey Sheldon, I have a tortoise at home named Sheldon. Got Frankie's mind train. It's a perfect starter coaster for the little ones. Not too fast. Just the right size. Go around multiple times. Yes, yeah, so Oakley's Honey Swings is a junior size swing ride. Here we got Ranger Randy's Scenic Railway. The train goes in a nice figure eight configuration. These little kids love trains. This water tower looks like it'd be a, a spray place for the kids. However, it's a little too cool to be on right now. Got Rocky's Ranger Planes. So yep, you spin in your plane. There's a joystick there to use to make the plane go up as it spins around. Last up for this area, you got Sheldon Speedway. It goes pretty slow, except you get a nice whip at the end as the cars go around. So right next to Sheldon Speedway, you got this eatery right here. Eatery is not open right now because it is a low attendance day. Even though it's a Saturday, it's still preseason. So this building is essentially open for restrooms. Around the side, they got this old, uh, you know, little theater, little stage, but it's kind of crumbling. So right now, they got this fence blocking it off. All right, so this area is a dead end, so I'll come back to this. Next, we're gonna cross the bridge and show you everything else. All right, so we are crossing the bridge. This is the larger of the areas of the park. See the train. Already went on the train. All right, so this is their mini board. <laughs> Got salads and fries. Yeah, you got this lion with a beer. We have Coke Freestyle machines right over here. All right, so from Chicken Chalet. Got restroom locations right behind it. So I'm gonna head to the right. Go behind the restaurant. And this is gonna take us over where the sky ride is. So Skyride takes you down through a lot of the park and you make a loop around you come right back. So it is a two-way ride. Directly across from the Skyride is Blizzard. All right, so Blizzard is an indoor scrambler. You should have cool air pumped in here and music and uh, lighting sometimes. All right, so around the back you got first aid. Also, the Human Resources Building, this is for employees. I'm assuming this used to be a restaurant at one point. Then you got this giant swing right here. It's called Daredevil Dive. So you're strapped into a harness, you raise up to the pole in the center, and then you let go. Then you swing back and forth. So it's kind of called a sky coaster in most parks. Got great escape attitudes. Let's see one of the many gift shops they have here. Lots of clothing and hats. All right, so showing you the map again so you see right where I'm at. We're doing all this whole area on the right-hand side. All right, we come to Pandemonium. Yeah, buddy, didn't that look fun? Next up, we got Screaming Eagles. So we've seen this type of ride at many, many different parks. All different theming. 
So you control the, the sails in the front. That's going to dictate how far out you swing. Get some good height on these things. Got Alice in Wonderland. So yeah, they got a lot of story characters here. So yeah, we saw this area from the train. Land is singing flowers. This is where Alice grows large, pops out of the house. Oh yeah, Treshar Cat. Scary tree, and you see Treshar Cat has disappeared except for his smile. Got Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Guy here. So it's good to see that when Six Flags took over this park, they didn't go and destroy all of this unique stuff that this park has. Queen of Hearts. So this is a little walkthrough for the kids. All right, you got the Great Escape Festival Marketplace. So this is not open today, but I'm showing you the menu board. So if you do come here, you'll have an idea of what they've got. Then you got the Alpine Fest House. Oh. All right, here's the entrance. All right, so you got the baskets. Got salads and more. Got pizza. Got sides and treats. Lots of indoor seating. Right across now you got lots of games of chance. Even claw machines. All right, so through the other side, got a couple more games of chance. Then you come up to the next ride, you got Cannonball Express. So this is a fair and carnival staple. You just get some really, really good speed. If you're riding with a smaller person, make sure they are on the inside, not on the outside, because you will squish them as the force is going to push you to the left. Just to the left of that, you got Convoy. You see, Convoy goes around. This is all automated. The kids do not get to control the speed or anything. Go around a few times. So right across from Convoy, you got Balloon Race. It does not appear this is operating today. Right next day, you got locker rentals and restrooms. All right, so from those restrooms, we're gonna be going on this path right here temporarily. This is just to the right of the Alpine Fest House. All right, we come to Raging River. This is their water rapids ride. Got a very good chance of getting wet on this ride. There we go, Raging River. See more of the track. It all depends on where you're sitting. They've been on water rapids rides at other parks. Come off completely bone dry. Other parks, I've gotten off completely and totally soaked. So basically expect to get wet and be surprised if you don't. Put it that way. <laughs> Across now you got the Alpine bobsled roller coaster. 
This is down. The website does say that it's coming soon. So it's being renovated. Hopefully it shows up. Not sure when or if this season. Cool thing with this, it is trackless. You see one of the ride vehicles. Only other park that I know in the Six Flags line that has this is Six Flags Fiesta Texas. So at the end of this path, you come to Northwoods Picnic Groves. This can be rented for groups, special events. So there are restrooms in the back here. I also have the smokehouse over here. Of course, this is not open right now. This is just some of the stuff they would serve here. So on the way to the back, I see another one of their haunted houses. This is used, of course, during their Halloween event. All right, so I backtracked. But his restrooms again, right here and there. So now, we're gonna be heading this direction. So entrance to Hurricane Harbor is back in this area. Got part of Hurricane Harbor. Got trade winds, Hurricane Harbor souvenirs and necessities. So this is good if you come here and forgot to bring a swimsuit or maybe a towel or a sunblock. All sorts of stuff in here. Got hats, they got sandals, got swim goggles for the kids. So this is Alpine Bob Sled's entrance. You see where I'm at? On the map. So I got some more to show you. And went on this pathway. That's right all right here. I went all the way up there. So I just have all this part over here to do. So the pathway you see the go-kart track. Gonna follow the little pathway down. Start pricing. Yep, no problem. $14 per ride, $30 per person ride all day. So you see more of the track for the bobsled. So standard go-karts. You control the vehicle. You ride around the track. So right in the pathway before you get to the go-karts is the main entrance to Splashwater Island. So water park fully opens in two weeks. See part of the track for the roller coaster over here. All right, so I backtracked to the pathway before I turned. This time I'm gonna go this direction. I got Buccaneer Beach. Looks like this part of the water park is actually open today. So that's surprising. I didn't think any of the water park was going to be open today. So at least part of it is. Let the kids cool off a little bit. And Noah's bathhouse in the back. It is a changing room. You got lockers. So a good portion of this side of the park is dedicated to the water park. All right, so I'm following this pathway down, coming right back to where I was. You want to go down again? So from here, we're gonna be heading to the right. All right, this last little area got extreme supernova. All right, so this is a mini pendulum ride. You see a lot larger versions. So it's gonna rotate and swim back and forth until it has enough momentum to get up into its highest point. And this does not rotate all the way around, but you do get some good height to it. You do have restroom locations next to that. My last roller coaster I rode today was the Comet. Cool thing with this, you do have a single rider line. Now this was incredibly smooth. It's got an out and back design. And you go out and back multiple times. 
This is placard here all about the comet. So according to that placard, the comet's life began in 1948 in Ontario, Canada. It was moved multiple times. 1989, it closed at its last location. Luckily, it was saved. Like I said, very, very smooth ride. I mean, you do feel a little bit of the bumps. Got several bunny hills at the end. But it's relatively smooth for a wooden roller coaster of its age. Very, very enjoyable ride. All right, so this is the last area of the park that I showed you. All right, now you may have noticed the video quality partway through my tour has changed. The battery on my camera died. It evidently didn't charge fully last night. Uh, so I am doing the rest of this tour on my cell phone. I'm doing the best to try and keep it steady. And hopefully the video quality is not gonna be too bad. All right, right near the front, you got flags, the Great Escape Six Flags store apparel and souvenirs. Got a great selection. It's like it says, apparel. Well, they also have uh, these knockoff Crocs. And you got the sports bottles, you know, your fillable bottles. They do have hats. And all these right here are our bottle koozies for your drink bottle. Like I have one for my bottle that helps keep it cool. It's got a little uh, got a strap. They also have some essentials. Got ponchos, towels, and they're all important. Sunblock. Also right up front you got coaster candy. Always a sweet time. Yeah, not quite as much as I was expecting to be in here. So then on the side, the next area, you got this stuff. So all this delicious stuff. Look at the gummy bears and fudge. So basically the other portion of the store has all the good stuff. that one side of the store didn't have a whole lot and then bolt candies and pre-bag stuff we have like, we have like clubs and choirs. so and then the last part of the store it's not like a class. kind of spread out got some plush More fun plush, or sour candies, and so yeah, good for your sweet tooth right here. Your dentist will be happy because then you'll have cavities and he'll get money. All right, directly across from Coaster Candy, you got Village Toy Store. So the one gift shop has all clothing. This has got all your plush. The type of stuff most of the kids are going to be interested in. And you got these emoji hats. Started out as being the poop emoji, but it's kind of morphed into cute, cuddly critters. And then some people claim it's not a poop emoji, but a chocolate ice cream emoji. She's over here. Lots of animals and snakes. So yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything having to do with uh, the Six Flags. Oh, and you got some kid size shirts right here. So Coaster Candy. 
this whole big building here. Multiple different storefronts. So just to the left of the toy store, you do have restroom locations. So back at the main entrance, exit is this way. And exit takes you into the largest gift shop. Got the Great Escape Emporium. So the Emporium is going to have just all sorts of stuff. Kind of ironic that they are showing a Bugs Bunny cartoon because the Looney Tunes are not, doesn't make an appearance at this uh, Six Flags Park. There's no Looney Tunes characters, no Looney Tunes rides. So this gift shop has a little bit of everything. Is that your that we saw at the other gift shops, including candies. This is essentially a mixture of the other three gift shops that I showed you. Gives you one last chance for your kids to ask for something before you leave. Don't you love stuff like this? So we're at exit of the Emporium. You're right out in the front again. All right, everybody, this is gonna wrap up my visit to Six Flags Great Escape in Queensbury, New York. Had a great time. The weather's been beautiful. It didn't get below mid 70s. Uh, had a little bit of a chance of rain earlier, but it never actually did rain, which is good, so nothing closed down. They said this is a smaller park not originally built as a Six Flags Park. It's, not, it's a lot of history. I'll put some information down in the description of the video so that way you're able to see part of this, you know, of the history of this place. If you want to see more, you can look it up yourself. So leave some comments down below what your favorite ride was or something else that I saw here today. A lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Some very unique rides that I've never seen in another Six Flags Park. So uh, I, I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye.